Open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worship God of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed, she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Amen. The psalm point for today is Psalm 67. We will read in unison. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. 
the earth has brought for her, her in Greece. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from Revelation of John. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city had no, has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will, there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. Be nothing unclean, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and, and of, the, of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there'll be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord.
festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethzatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up. Take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it hurt by the fact 
fact that he was promoted by this Guggenheim, and he made plenty of money. The valuable and revered, though, Pollock's art doesn't really work into any particular school or defined style. So the rule he brought about in his painting is that in art, there aren't rules. This is all well and good for art. We can have a creative conversation. But when it comes to the real world, we might like to know the rules, right? We need to know where things fit, where things belong, where everything goes. Rules give us guidelines and standards and structure. Children both hate and love rules all at once. It gives them stability and also something to push against. Rules tell us what to do and what not to do and how to behave and how to fit in. Many rules are conventional and implied. And others are passed and passed along from parents to children. Other rules have to be established, written, and communicated, and enforced. Rules range from basic expectations all the way to codified and complicated tax law. Consequences for breaking rules there, of course, social sanction, slap on the wrist, or specified legal ramifications. So rules are great. Except when they're inconsistent. That drives us crazy. As a younger child, I got to do more on weekends than my older brother was allowed to do. That was fair. In one of my schools, we didn't have enough parking for all the students who could drive, so it was restricted to seniors only. Oh my gosh, how much acrimony happened at the beginning of the year when a parent who's finally figured out that they're kicking drive themselves places and realizes that they can't drive them to school, drive themselves to school. That is why. We could go on about that. Uh, we like the rules to be fair, for sure. But like life, it's not fair. Sometimes rules are inconsistent. In the past, of course, rules for land only white people were different than they were for everybody else. Because those folks made the rules. Or that was the social convention, right or wrong. Rules for men are different than rules for women. Societal and legal changes are dynamic as the culture changes. As law and as culture changes, those who benefit or from and revere the old rules tend to resist and fight changing the rules. Because people in power like to keep it. They like to know where things belong. And when people color outside of the lines, they go crazy. And we could go on about that and the balance of those things in our life. I'm not pointing the fingers because I too have my own nostalgic understanding of how things ought to be. But boy, we could have a great art. It's a good thing we come to church. There are no rules here, of course. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we impose those on ourselves, but we band together and work hard to keep them. We worship with certain words, certain texts, decently and in order. Or I just had to trudge through the name list today because that lesson is appointed. I know thus we will pay attention. Decently and in order seems to be the Episcopal Church plan. But hell hath no fury like Episcopalians reacting to rule change. To wit, high church liturgy or low church liturgy. That's an old fight. Prayer book revision. 1979, back even to 1928, from 1660. The ordination of women. right there. The ordination of a vow and, and faithful people who are of homosexual orientation. Okay? Bishops. All of them. All of these changing in the rules or reactions to culture or inspiration of the spirit growing us differently all of these, of course, resulted in the church in breakaway factors.
factions, new denominations, complete with a set of their own rules, <laughs> which are to so-called effort to be more faithful or more pure or more right than God with the darn apostate folks they left behind. Then when they get to the promised land of purity, they argue with each other and break up again. That's the story almost of the Christian faith. But those rules do not bound us forever. They can keep us together. And they can tear us apart. What do we do with this? The last line of the gospel where we read today drops a crucial detail and one we might miss on our way to settling into the sermon about healing. It reads, Now that day was the Sabbath. The story is that Jesus goes to Jerusalem for a festival and enters at the Sheep Gate, a great detail, and, that, and there is a spring-fed pool there that bubbles up occasionally with fresh water on a regular basis, keeping it clean, pushing the dirt to and because sheep are going to market, are brought in through the sheep gate, they're washed in that water, cleaned up, detailed for sale. And thus, if they're scrubbed, that water is filled with lamin, a natural balm and sap. So it makes sense that people with all kinds of infirmities, especially those with skin, bathe in that water, then it bubbles up and the oils are mixed up. It's all soothing. There's a man there who is ill and has been ill for 38 years, and been there for 38 years too. Jesus asks the man if he wants to be made well, and that is a sermon for another day. But right then and there, without even you know, bypassing the pool, he says, stand up and take your mat and walk, and the man does, and we say, miracle, unbelievable. That's Jesus showing us what God does. I don't believe there's more to this story. But then there's the last detail. Now this was the Sabbath. The religious rules were clear, fixed, and serious. The Sabbath day was a day on which all work was forbidden, as we know. All work. We're not just talking about closing movie theaters and liquor stores. We're talking about doing nothing that would be work. Picking up your mat would be defined as work. Healing someone else would be defined as work. And even today, in the strictest of Orthodox Judaism, those folks will not turn dials on an oven to make the roast or punch an elevator to go up or down. I heard an interview with a woman this big. As a child, volunteered to push buttons for Jewish people in the hospital so they could get to where they needed to go. That's serious. It's a beautiful practice. We should all do that. We really should. But it has some downsides, of course. <laughs> if you didn't set the timer on the oven to make the roast, that's where the timer on the oven would be meant. So on the one hand, Jesus follows the rules. He goes up to the temple for this festival. That's the first word. And on the other, he smashes the Sabbath barrier to heal and help. And this is not the first time, and it will not be the last. And everyone knows this. He is clear and convincing in his explanation. The law is a human thing. Indeed, it helps us keep ourselves in order. But we're apt to be selfish and inconsiderate and wily and scurrilous. So we need some order to live in community. The law is good for that. And it's better when it is a bringer of grace. But the law can be an idle hindrance when it's wielded to subvert others, to separate from to prevent God's blessing for all people, or even the rest of creation. So the law is helpful, great, if it's, a, if it's used to make the, the law proclaimer more elite, more privileged. What's that? We don't sit easy in interpreting that. It's much more popular today, many will do, is to insert the psychological analysis and theory of change for the man that sat there for 38 years, aggrieved and a victim. But what about the rules, Jesus? What about the rules? He tells us that he comes to save.
save us, and yet he goes to the cross looking like, more like one needing saving than a savior. But this Easter event, which we can't turn away from, it blasts us with a fresh perspective, a new way of thinking, a completely broken old idea that death somehow is the end, that all of life is what we see. So rising to life from death defies all the rules. We got that wrong. And Jesus says, I'll show you what's wrong. So what else do we get wrong? Rules are stated with periods and exclamation points. Most often, punctuation is a set of rules is needed in order for it to be clear. But in this, Jesus shows us the absolute value of a rule with a question mark. Do we need to break some rules to set things right? Jesus does. As we're not Jesus, we are better off seeing life as art rather than a paint by numbers prescription. Is life art or art life? The answer, yes. Sometimes something beautiful can be recreated from old shapes in new and dynamic color. Jesus is doing that with us. God is doing that with us. And that spirit doesn't follow the rules. We, my friends, are God's work of art. We're not finished. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten. Prayers of the people are according to Form 3, as found in your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
that the man of justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Sue Rapp, Clayton Perrin, Carol Collins, the Knights family, Natalie, Candace Sammons, Al Bennington, Ruth and George Bryant, Brenda, Lisa, Candace Moore, Betty Taylor, Rosemary Atkinson, Dan and Shirley Haller, Maggie, Henry Hopeman, Karen Mott, Emily G, Doris Savage, Sarah Reynolds, Carolyn, Joe Kopp, and Diane Hughes. We pray for those in military service, especially August Bolt, Austin, James Badgett, Thomas Garcia, Jake Hillary, Patrick Hillary, Isaiah Gerardo, Samuel Jared LePage, Juan Munera, Catherine Munera, Austin Nicholson, Luke Scrooby, and Paul Stoneburner. We pray for Christ Luckett's Leesburg, Holy Comforter Richmond, and Holy Comforter Vienna. For our mission partner, Camp Holiday Trails, Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Denise King, Shaq Shackelford, and Bob Green, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
which has been meeting all year with uh, Patty Cunningham, sometimes virtually, sometimes in person, uh, has finished their instruction, though the bishop isn't going to be here anytime soon, so we're just going to do something for them anyway. We're going to give thanks for them, and, uh, and then they'll be able to come and be uh, received as, as full members of this church when the bishop shows up. Speaking of which, we'll have a new bishop. Uh, hopefully on June the 4th, we have an election. There are four candidates that are traveling. They're doing the dog and pony show. I refer to it as the ecclesial swimsuit contest. They, they, it's not appropriate anymore, but they run around from place to place and answer questions. Uh, you gotta pray for them, that's awful. And, uh, and yet everybody has something behind every question they ask. And of course, we want great things for our church. So. Pray for that process. It's going to be a while. Part of the rules. Are there uh, any other announcements that I'm forgetting? I think I've covered everything. Uh, are there birthdays or anniversaries celebrated this week? Jennifer Smith. And I will volunteer to record next Sunday. Ah, if you are able to push a button and record next Sunday. <laughs> Talk to, talk to our able and talented and exceptionally lovely Jennifer Smith. Birthdays or anniversaries? Beth, Homer. I have a birthday on Wednesday. Hot dog. Yes. Boy, I have been happy for 43 years. 43 years. <laughs> Roy's been quiet when she says happily married. I I think it's true in general, but I think it's awesome. 43 years, that's an accomplishment. Uh, yes, who's, uh, who's that? Chris Bork. Uh, Ooh, 20 years for the Bork. My very own daughter, Emily Thomas, was 27 yesterday. Wow, that's a long time. Well, let's give thanks for all that. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Watch over these, your people, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall and in their heart. May your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God.
thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed them. And by his rising to life he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us the holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you with the faithful of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Finally, my friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Larry, is what number? 405. We're saving the big one, the oh, beautiful for spacious guys for next week. Which one is it, Larry? 405. 405. Thank you.